Hey guys, welcome back to Med with May Simple. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get notified as soon as we upload our videos. And please support us by donating on Patreon by clicking on the link given in the description of this video. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to see about anthrax. Anthrax is basically a zoonotic disease, which means the disease is acquired to humans from animals. In this case, mainly from herbivorous animals such as cattle. The infected animals shed the bacteria by secretions in the nose, mouth and through anus. So the bacteria which, has, which are discharged from these secretions will remain viable in the soil for so long and they start producing spores. And the animals which come into further contact with this infected soil containing the spores will get infected too. Anthrax is caused by a bacteria known as Bacillus anthracis. It is a gram-positive bacilli. It is capable of producing spores and it is capsulated, which means they have a capsule. You all be aware of Koch's postulates and this was proposed by Robert Koch and he proposed these postulates based on studies on this bacteria, Bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis has been an agent for biowar for so long and they have been using the spores of anthrax for this purpose to kill many people. The manifestations of anthrax can be classified into the following three headings. So the main, the most common manifestation is cutaneous anthrax, um, and the other manifestations are respiratory or pulmonary anthrax, and the least common type is intestinal anthrax. First, let's see about cutaneous anthrax. Cutaneous anthrax is also known as height sorter disease. This is because um, this this form of anthrax is more more common in the people who carry the hides or infected skin of animals on their bare back or on bare skin without any clothes over their body. So it's easy to acquire the infection if they have any abraded skin or mucosa over their body. So that's why it's also known as height sorter disease. The transmission is by entry of spores through wounds or abraded skin. The clinical features are mainly edema, it can be either localized to the site of entry of the infection or it can be throughout the body also in some cases. So the characteristic feature of anthrax, cutaneous anthrax is that there will be a um, there will be a black necrotic lesion known as scar. So anthrax basically means cold. So it's called so because it is called so because the because of the color of the lesion so the color of the lesion is coal black in color so it's so black so that's why anthrax is named so you gotta remember the escar thing mostly the cutaneous anthrax is not so fatal if it's properly treated and it is usually a self-limiting disease if adequate treatment is given the other form of anthrax is pulmonary anthrax this is also known as wool porter disease this is because the people who work in industries who deal with the wool of uh, sheep um, which is infected with um, anthrax are more prone to get this form of anthrax so it's known as wool porter disease the transmission in this case is by inhalation of spores uh, which are present in the wool of infected sheep the clinical features are different from that of cutaneous anthrax. Here, the features are hemorrhagic pneumonia, hemorrhagic meningitis, bacteremia, which is present of bacteria throughout in, uh, in the blood of the patient, and this can be fatal if untreated. The third and least common form is intestinal anthrax. So, one can get this infection by eating contaminated meat, which are not cooked properly or if the meat is contaminated with the bacteria or the spores. So the main manifestation is bloody diarrhea and this can be very fatal. This is one of the most fatal form or manifestation of um, anthrax. The virulence factors of anthrax can be classified into two. The first one is the anthrax toxin which consists of three factors such as edema factor, protective factor and lethal factor. So the edema factor is mainly involved in causing edema. The protective factor will bind to the host cell receptors and it will help the bacteria to enter the host cell. 
the lethal factor is so harmful and it is very uh, it is responsible for various uh, severe manifestations of anthrax. The other virulence factor is the anthrax capsule which is a polypeptide. So the thing which you need to see here is that the anthrax capsule is made up of polypeptide which is proteins whereas the capsule of other bacteria are made up of polysaccharides which are carbohydrates. So you gotta remember that. The lab diagnosis of anthrax involves the following steps collection of specimen and DAC microscopy culture, culture smear, serology and molecular diagnosis. So first of all you need to remember that the specimen which you are going to collect from the anthrax infected animals or humans is going to be so contagious so you got to be you got to take all the preventive measures before you handle those specimens. The specimens depend on the infection type of infection for example if it is a cutaneous anthrax and if there are skin lesions which are present you can take the spe specimen from the pus or you can take skin swabs. If it is a case of septicemia in which the infection spreads throughout the blood, you can take blood and you can examine. If it manifests as hemorrhagic meningitis, the preferred sample for collection is cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. If it is intestinal anthrax, the preferred specimens are gastric aspirate or the feces of the individual. The first one is diac microscopy. So if you do if you perform a procedure known as gram staining on the specimen and you observe under light microscope, you can see gram positive bacilli in chains which are characteristically described as bamboo stick appearance. In this picture you can see that the rectangular purple color bacilli are arranged in chains. So it looks like bamboo stick, right? So that's why it is characteristically described as bamboo stick appearance. So there is a reaction known as McFadden's reaction. So it is a test used to detect the capsule of anthrax bacilli. The stain used to do this test is girls polychrome methylene blue stain. So in this the capsule appears purple and the bacilli, the remaining bacilli remains, um, appears blue in color. So this is used to detect the capsule of the anthrax bacilli. So culture. Anthrax is actually a non-fastidious organism, so it can grow very well on normal nutrient agar itself. It doesn't require any special conditions. So it can grow a nutrient agar to produce colonies which are about 2 mm, irregular, round, opaque, and they are grayish white in color. And when you observe this culture under a light microscope, you can see something known as which is described as medusa head appearance, which is shown here in this picture. Look at the hair of this statue. So this is described as medusa head appearance. So this is how the uh, colonies appear under light microscope. So the bacteria will be appearing like this when it will be arranged in this pattern when they when the culture is observed under light microscope. So that's why it is described as medusa head appearance under light microscopy. So if you um, culture the bacillus anthracis, um, bacillus anthracis, what happens is uh, on the blood agar it will produce non-hemolytic colonies. Okay, On gelatin tab agar it will produce inverted fur tree appearance. So you got to remember this too. There is this inverted fur tree appearance because much of the reaction occurs on the top of the tube. So there, there used to be um, much of a reaction and the reaction keeps decreasing towards the bottom of the tube. That's why it's in the shape of an inverted fur tree. So now let's see about the culture smear. So when you perform culture, um, you can take that and you can perform smear out of it and you can examine and it will also show, it will also show bamboo stick appearance uh, following gram staining. And the spores can be demonstrated by using special stains such as hot malachite green. The serology is detecting the antibodies against anthrax in the blood of the patient. So antibodies can be detected by a test known as ELISA, which is enzyme-linked immunosorbent say. And there is also another method known as immunodiffusion in gel method, which is which can also be used to detect the antibodies against 
the anthrax bacteria in the patients. Molecular diagnosis involves doing a test known as PCR, also known as polymerase chain reaction, and this has got high sensitivity and specificity. The treatment of um, anthrax bacteria is mainly by giving drugs such as ciprofloxacin or doxycycline, and if you require, you can add a clindamycin to it. So this is the treatment of choice, but you got to remember that anthrax is still very sensitive to even penicillin G. It's because this infection is very rare, so they, de they haven't developed that much resistance to penicillin G. But however, due to the increased uh, adverse reactions, such as anaphylaxis and other side effects associated with penicillin G, other drugs such as ciprofloxacin and doxycycline remains the drug of choice. So the treatment has to be given for about two months. So that's it for today. Please support us by donating on patreon.com slash made simple. You'll also get many rewards by donating us on patreon.com slash made simple. Check it out by visiting the link given in the description below. You can also download the slides by donating us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel made which made simple and press the bell icon to get notified as soon as we upload our videos and share our videos to your friends and please tell them to subscribe. Thank you.